days are getting colder, shorter, darker. This is my favorite time of year. This is also the time of year I usually begin heading south, to warmer weather, to familiar places, to coastlines and desert. A slow meander down the Oregon and California coasts, and then eventually over to Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico, until the weather warms just enough to travel through Utah and the Canyonlands. Until spring gives way to summer, and suddenly there are too many places to choose from. For four years, I followed this predictable pattern of winter migration. And then last winter, I did something different. I spent the colder months in the Pacific Northwest, fully embracing the moody weather and the endless rain. It wasn't supposed to start raining for another three hours, so, uh, crap. <laughs> because I still have three hours to go tonight, and it is midnight. Not good, not good. Good morning. I went to bed at 2.30 in the morning because I was trying to game plan. It started raining at midnight. The winds were crazy. It was definitely unsafe to drive. I was kind of sliding around. I ended up at a rest stop. And now I still have six hours of driving and it has not stopped raining. The wind is pretty wild and it's only supposed to get worse. So wish me luck, guys. <laughs> that beeping because I have that spare tire on the back. So it thinks something is behind me at all times whenever I'm reversing. That's my radio. <laughs> We're, oh my God, I can't see anything. The long nights and gray days, to me, felt like a form of unspoken permission to unwind, rest, and recharge. very uneven. I'm kind of a diva when it comes to having my van flat. We need to lift this side and especially the front. So we're gonna need stacks on stacks. I felt like I finally had the time and space to wander without the self-imposed pressure of making the most of good weather or the need to be doing something all the time. This is one thing I genuinely love about having my van is in between shooting, I can just run back home and grab a snack, import my footage, maybe watch a YouTube video, like I can do whatever, and then just run back out and shoot. It's like, I'm already here. 
Honestly, it's almost hard to imagine not having my entire house with me at all times. Like if I roll up to a place to meet friends and it's a little bit chillier than I thought it would be, no big deal, my entire closet's with me. So I'm just like, hold on one sec and I go change. And I've gotten so used to that, kind of spoiled in a way, that I have like a mild, I don't know what you would call it, but I'm just like, oh my gosh, what do I bring with me? What do I put in my purse? What do I put in my backpack? I just want to be able to have access to everything at all times. I'm like a turtle. That's what I am. I'm like, I'm like a turtle. This is my shell and it's hard to imagine not having it, if that makes any sense. I'm going to go ahead and import my files really quick and then go catch sunset because I think it's going to pop off. Uh, there's some clouds and I think we're going to get some nice pastels. Heading south every year means existing in a kind of perpetual summer, and it can feel a little disorienting. Over time, in the constant absence of change, everything can start to look and feel the same. <laughs> I stayed in Long Beach, Washington, walking the coastline and watching sunsets. I spent a month based near Portland, spending entire days curled up by the fire, reading and watching the rainfall. I flew to Florida to see family. <laughs> then took my time traveling south along the Oregon coast. I'm working and I'm on whale watch. <laughs> I just saw some spouts out my window. So I got the camera set up just in case so I can swing open the door and hopefully catch them on the long lens. When spring arrived, I settled into Napa Valley and the Bay Area for a couple of longer pet sits. I spent nearly a month feeling grounded, re-establishing healthy routines and good habits. And then the summer came around and things kind of went sideways. My van, as most of you know, became unlivable. My trip overseas was cut short, and suddenly I was in over my head with a complete van rebuild. 
it was all kind of a blur, to be honest. And by the time October rolled around, I was really craving a slowdown. What'd you guys do with the other egg? Craving stability is nothing new around here. It's been a reoccurring theme for a while now. There's no denying that being in one place is healthier for me in a lot of ways. We got two eggs today. And sometimes I feel disappointed in myself for not making a change. But then I find myself pet sitting and yet another literal paradise after months of freedom on the road. And I wonder why I would ever consider giving up my current lifestyle. I spent this fall exploring the Rockies and the San Juan Mountains. And for about a week, I stayed at this incredible house on the outskirts of Durango, looking after two Bengal cats. It was yet another reminder that unless I win the lottery sometime soon, I won't be able to afford a sprawling estate with a pool, a cold plunge, jacuzzi, a dry sauna, gym, satellite sunset hut, and two miles of private hiking trail. Not even close. And I find myself in what has now become a very familiar cycle of questioning. Why pour my life savings into something basic and choose one single place when I can travel and look after other people's beautiful homes? Especially ones that come with cute pets. I ran up to this sunset spot. It's absolutely incredible. It's called the Sunset Hut and it's on this property that I'm house sitting for. And I came up here to drone, but naturally I forgot my controller. <laughs> so just gotta enjoy the sunset. This is a cycle I get stuck in often. I burn out on the road and think about getting a place. I weigh the pros and cons of both buying and renting. Then I spend hours researching where I might wanna live because I still don't know. And then I crunch the numbers of van life versus paying a mortgage versus paying rent. And every time, at least so far, I decide that if I can just continue with my current lifestyle, I'll keep saving money. And then I can hopefully afford something in a place I really love. The thing I can't quite get behind, to be completely transparent, is the thought of having a mortgage. To me, debt feels like the opposite of freedom. The last time I was in debt was in 2014 when I finally paid off my college loans. And for better or worse, I've just grown accustomed to the relative financial freedom of living with less. In my case, that means having no place to call home. But it also means getting to do all the things I love. That said, travel isn't the only thing I love. I do miss having a place of my own and the stability that comes with it. 
I don't know if it's just a phase or the longer nights and darker days, but something does need to change, even if only for a season. Or maybe for good. I'm still trying to figure it out. And over the past few months, I've started to explore what that change might be. Earlier this year, my family and I started chatting about a place my grandparents bought over 30 years ago. 64 acres of land in the Ozarks. They eventually built it out to include a small network of cabins and a large two-story main cabin. It's been mostly abandoned for the past 10 years, with only a few visits here and there. We found the plot of land on Google Maps, and it was mostly tree cover. But in one small section, something bright peeked through. And when we zoomed in, we realized it was the roofing of one of the cabins. And in an instant, I just knew. I had to go there. So that's what I did. I'm a chihuahua auntie. Fabio. I can't edit like this. <laughs> You're right on my tablet.